evening that we can come together in your name. Thank you for promising to be here in the middle of us. And Lord, as we consider, Lord, the gospel story, I pray, Father, that we would be drawn closer to you in your new and living way. In Jesus' name, amen. So our call to worship, you should have it on the white piece of paper there. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and Jesus said, He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Be loved, let us love, and serve one another as Christ has loved us. Let's worship the Lord. Turn in your books to 352. Oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus, in all three verses. <clears throat>
Kaylee told me that she wasn't going to be here. We were talking about it. I said, well, there's a, we have a Monday, Thursday service. She said, I don't know what that is, but I'm not going to be there because i got to work on Thursday. I said, we've been doing this. This is our eighth, I think our eighth Holy Week we've had together. And uh, she still didn't know what that word meant. So just a reminder, right, it means commandment. So it's New Commandment Thursday is what we're talking about. Uh, from John chapter 13, 1 through 17, it's going to be paraphrased. The day had come for the Passover meal. The Jews celebrated Passover as they had for centuries with roasted lamb, unleavened bread, bitter herbs, and four cups of wine. Jesus made plans to celebrate with the 12 disciples that he had named his apostles. Jesus sent them into Jerusalem to prepare a traditional Passover meal, and he joined them that evening. And then he did something that surprised everyone. <laughs> he got a towel and a wash basin, and he began to wash the feet of each of his apostles. When it was Peter's turn, he didn't think it was right for Jesus to be washing feet. People walked around in sandals on dusty roads, and it was the job of a servant to wash the feet of a guest when he came into a house. But Jesus wasn't a servant, he was a master. Peter said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, you don't know why I'm doing this, but you'll understand later. But Peter was not convinced and said, you're never going to wash my feet. Peter said, unless I wash you, you will have no part of me. So Peter said, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord. And Jesus answered, a person who has had a bath only needs to wash his feet. His whole body is clean. And you're clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he'd finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for this is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and your teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set an example that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth. No servant is greater than his master nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Amen. So I was thinking, one of the tricky questions for this passage of Scripture in, in our celebration of, of Holy Week is, what would our equivalent of foot washing be? Because it's really, it really doesn't... We could go ahead and wash each other's feet, but it doesn't really hold the same meaning because, well, we're not 2,000 years ago, and we wear socks, and we have paved roads, and we don't have servants either, and we have hot running water, just doesn't, just doesn't carry across as far as, as being uh, uh, an equivalent. What, would it, what do you think an equivalent would be? And that's like you can actually answer, because it's like this is like a Thursday service, right? Elise, what do you think? You, you always get called on, I bet. Church, school, college, right? It's like James, poor guy. It's like washing each other's pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I can get mine out of the garage, Stan. No, seriously, you got any ideas? Any thoughts? I'm sure you've thought about this with right yourselves. I have. And I'm, I'm not really sure that we can really come up with something that would be just across the board make equivalent. But I was thinking that caregiving is, is like that. Right? It's caregiving. Uh, I remember I worked with um, the developmentally disabled when we were in Iowa. And I remember one of my real good friends, he said, aren't you ashamed to be with those guys? Because his idea was, you know, it's like, you know, someone's going to think that, you know, maybe they're related to you. And I said, that would be okay, actually. I'm, I'm good with that. No, it doesn't bother you. But some, that, I think that kind of, 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 of personal acts of service that would be considered lowly, maybe, by the rest of society. I think, I think nursing home ministry is like that. Care center ministry is like that. I know I hear people say, well, I can't go and do that because it's depressing. It smells or it makes me uncomfortable, which I think... Maybe they're not quite getting the whole idea that Jesus is saying here, right? But I do know this. If we, if we, if we distilled it down, we do know that the Lord is saying to us, right, in this passage of Scripture, by using the example of foot washing, he's demonstrating a heart of giving, a heart of service, and a heart of care towards others. 
And I just think that really just quickly, it quickly can be related to our personal lives, right? Putting our spouse first, serving others, humility instead of pride, care instead of self-care, otherishness instead of selfishness, right? Because it's not to be the opposite of selfishness, I don't think is actually selflessness. It's part, that's almost like saying mm, the opposite of, no, forget it. Let's just, just we'll just use my word because I like it anyway. So to be focused on other people, otherishness, right? He was contrasting the kingdom value to the world's value system, especially when it comes to leadership. And then I also think that we can, from this, we can be reminded that we first must allow Christ to wash us. So we ourselves are clean, and then we can wash other people's feet, right? Like it's not enough that we do service, or we do care, or that we have otherishness even, right? If we're not in Christ, because otherwise it doesn't have value, and what we, if we get it, thank you very much. From Christ and his sacrifice, from Christ and his service to us, we have something to give somebody else. Jesus said, just as I've loved you, you're to love one another. It's because he first loved us, loved us that we're able to extend his grace to other people. And this message is all throughout the word of God. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Christ's self-sacrifice for us, from the foot washing story to the passion itself, enables us and calls us to walk in his kind of love. So I would have, first we need to be ourselves clean, and then we're to wash other people's feet. And I think that's to love, to serve, to care, to put others before ourselves, especially in Christ and especially God's people. And then just something that struck me, I just thought I would share with you too, is I had never thought about the fact that he did all 12 apostles' feet. So he is, did it even to his enemy. I had never, never really thought about that, but just think about that, right? His act of service and love was even to his enemy, who wanted him dead and was responsible then for his betrayal. So I think the Lord would remind us and encourage us, and I think it's wonderful if, if, that we do this every year and remind ourselves, right, of the, of the new and living way that Jesus has called us to, that sometimes even though we've been in his kingdom, we still don't always follow the new and living way, even when we're old and have been in the kingdom a long time, right? On the night before he died, Jesus had a meal with his disciples, who he called friends. And while they were eating, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. And he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in memory of me. We meet together. I just realized that I probably didn't need you here right now. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> I need to talk to whoever wrote the service. We meet together as disciples and even friends of Jesus, who's invited us to come together and to share this meal. And we remember, especially on this night, New Commandment Thursday, that Jesus has called us to a new and living way. The way of the cross, the way of the kingdom, the way of Jesus. To love God and love each other. To serve God and to serve each other. So let us greet one another as brothers and sisters in God's family. Thank you, guys. <laughs>
So as we think about God's greatness tonight, his love and his goodness to us, I don't know about you, but the more I think about the cross and, and Jesus' sacrifice, I become, I become aware that I don't always behave like a member of God's family. And even sometimes on my best day, I don't always keep control of my tongue or my heart and my attitude. I think it's true of all of us. Often we've not cared about God or about other people in the way God would have us. Sometimes even stubbornly refuse to accept and to love and to serve those who Christ died for. So let's take a moment and let's honestly confess our sins. First examine our hearts and let's confess our sins and ask the Lord to forgive us. that we allow our hearts to lose focus and to wander from you and your ways. Would you guys read it with me? Okay? We'll, tr we'll start over. Loving God, we confess we allow our hearts to lose focus, to wander from you and your ways. Bring us back and forgive us. Send your spirit like a strong wind into our lives. Disturb our complacency. Expose our faults. Drive out our pride and our selfishness. Help us put right the things we have gone done wrong. Help us to be obedient to you by forgiving those who have wronged or hurt us. Clear away our grudges, our bitterness, hypocrisy, and critical hearts. Demolish the walls we have built between us. Freshen our lives with your presence. Renew and refresh with your spirit. Help us to live in love and peace with all people, but especially your people. God forgives us, and now he makes us free to have a new beginning. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask, Lord, that you would come and do the miracle that you have promised. Lord, that we would meet you in the breaking of the bread. I pray, Father, that as we share this Holy Supper, Lord, that we would meet you in it. In Jesus' name. If you're, if you're visiting, you're welcome to share communion with us. If you're in Christ, and hold the, the bread and we'll eat together. Well, they're handing it out. Turn to 324. 324.
we thank you that you gave, Lord, everything for us. You gave your body and you allowed it to be bruised and you allowed it to be tortured. You allowed yourself to be shamed and humiliated so that you could take away our sin. And Lord, we pray that we would be able to say, Lord, we give you everything, just as you've given everything for us, Lord. It's not even a comparison. Our little life that we could lay down for you is nothing compared to what you, the Son of God, God the Son, has done for us. Lord, we thank you for it. We're grateful to you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Consider his goodness and eat. Tonight we proclaim that Jesus Christ, God the Son, the Son of God, died, the holy for the unholy, the righteous for the unrighteous. And we proclaim not just your death, but also your resurrection, that on the third day by the power of your Holy Spirit you were raised from the dead. And that that same Spirit who raised you from the dead now gives life to our mortal bodies, abundant life, the new life, and eternal life, and the life to come. We proclaim not just your death and your resurrection, but Lord, also your promise that you'll return. You return not as an infant, not as a suffering servant, but the judge of the living and the dead, and come to take us to yourself. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd seal this time of communion in our hearts. Lord, that you'd help us to live in light of your soon coming return. In Jesus' name, amen. Our last song is, Lord, I'm grateful for the cross, and it's on your paper. This is brand new to me, so I need a lot of help for it.
celebrate the gift of Christ sacrificed for us. And we'll celebrate again on Sunday. And as you go, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord take great care of you. Give you and those you love great peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.